In this episode, we're going to show you what electric semi trucks look like close up and in person. So as we think about electric semi trucks, you, as we've mentioned before, you've got the three different variants of BEV plug-in, Hypertruck ERX, natural gas range extender, as well as fuel cell vehicles. And so as we go through this truck, I'm going to explain it both as you know, what components stay the same, as well as what is different amongst those three different platforms. So to start it off, there are really five different things that we need to consider in an electric semi truck. The first is what drive system are you using? Are you using E axles or a central mount? The next is the actual battery pack. Third is where is your electricity coming from? Fourth is the software integration and some key differentiations of what you can do with data. And then fifth, and maybe most important, is what does the vehicle look like? Is it a brand new vehicle? Is it an existing truck that OEMs are already producing today? So those are the five aspects that we're gonna dive into to showcase what electric semi trucks are like. The first aspect to look at on the vehicle is how do you actually apply power to the road? So to start, in a conventional diesel powered truck, normally has an engine under the hood and then a drive shaft that comes back to the front axle and then is also connected to the rear axle to be able to apply power to both of these axles uh, from the engine under the hood. In an electric truck, it's different. You have two different options. The first is a central mount motor solution and the second is an e-axle solution. So let's first start with a central mount motor solution. So it's actually architected very similar to a conventional uh, diesel truck where you have conventional rear axles and then you have a small drive shaft that would then be connected to an electric motor uh, that would be mounted about here in the vehicle and then that electric motor would drive both of these axles. You also need either a two or three speed transmission on that uh, electric motor so that you can be able to apply torque at all different speeds. Now on this vehicle though we're using e-axles. So the way the e-axles work is now your axles are actually totally independent. There's no connection between the two. You would then have an electric motor hooked to the front of it, as well as a two-speed transmission in each axle so that you can apply power at any speed. At low speeds, you have extremely high torque. And then on the highway, you also have high torque as well. So you really have two different options in an electric vehicle of how do you want to apply power down to the road. The next aspect to look at is the battery pack. So on all the EVs we've seen in the space, the batteries are mounted to the frame rails. So on this truck, we have a battery pack on the left side as well as right side of the frame rail. The biggest difference you're gonna see is how large are these battery packs on these different EV trucks. Uh, and this really depends on how much EV range you're trying to get out of the vehicle. We're seeing for BEV plug-in trucks, there's usually a target of around 150, 200, maybe up to 250 miles. Uh, out of the vehicle, which is going to mean that you need a very large battery. And with some of the OEMs, we're actually seeing them not only do battery packs on the outside of the frame rails, but also fill the center of the frame rails as well with batteries. Uh, we've also seen uh, some of the EVs actually elongating the frame rails pretty substantially so that they can store more battery pack. Now, on, a, on the range extender truck, like what we're looking at here, one of the advantages is you actually can go get away with a very small battery pack. Uh, and that's why you can see we're not filling up the entire frame rail space because on our Hypertruck ERX, we're coming to market with only 75 miles of EV range. And then that thousand miles of total range is coming from the range extender on board. Now, once you choose what size of battery pack you need, you then need to choose what type of batteries you want. So what manufacturer do you want to come from as well as uh, what chemistry of battery do you want? You have different, different chemistries like NMC, LFP, LTO, uh, and you really need to look at the characteristics of the vehicle and what you're trying to achieve. Uh, some of them have higher energy density, some of them have longer life, uh, and then there's different safety characteristics along with each one as well. Uh, so each, each uh, manufacturer of electric vehicles is really trying to choose which battery makes sense for them. And the, one of the biggest drivers is how much range are you trying to get out of just the battery pack? The third aspect to look at is where does the power come from that charges the battery packs? So first with a BEV plug-in truck, uh, it's pretty simple. You have a plug on board the vehicle that connects into a, a wall charger outlet. Uh, we've seen these plugs located anywhere from you know, just behind the, the driver's step uh, to all the way back near the end of the fairing, near the E-axles. Really doesn't matter where the plug is located, it still sa serves the same purpose in order to be able to charge the batteries. Now, in a range extender truck, 
Uh, the whole philosophy is you're bringing that power plant on board the vehicle with you in order to trickle charge the batteries. Now, one thing to mention is even with our Hypertruck ERX, we're actually offering both. Uh, we do have a wall outlet charger as well as we've got the engine under the hood. So on this vehicle, uh, it is a natural gas engine that has an electric motor hooked to the rear of it that all its purpose is is to produce electricity to send a constant, constant trickle charge back to the battery pack. Same exact philosophy if you're looking at a fuel cell vehicle. As opposed to having a Cummins engine here, you're gonna have a fuel cell stack, uh, and that stack is there to constantly produce electricity to trickle charge the battery packs. Uh, and what we've seen with fuel cell vehicles is that we're utilizing the same space up here uh, to put the fuel cell. One aspect to consider with fuel cell trucks is you need uh, a tremendous amount of radiators and heat rejection from the vehicle. Uh, so we've seen not only do you need uh, the big radiator under the front of the hood, uh, we're also seeing that people are mounting radiators to the back of cab in order to be able to get rid of that heat that comes from a fuel cell. So ultimately, uh, a few different ways that we can produce electricity or actually charge this ba these, uh, these vehicles. But arguably, you know, where the electricity comes from is probably the most critical thing as you're considering electric vehicles. The next aspect to look at is the software of the vehicle. Now, there's a tremendous amount that goes into what drives these vehicles, the data behind it. And we see it as actually one of the things that's going to be a key differentiator for electric vehicle makers. So you can look at the embedded software, which is how do you actually connect things like the axles to the battery packs and the batteries to the charger. Uh, that's all the foundational code that makes the vehicle work. That's then coupled with uh, what are you actually showing to the driver, what's on your displays, how much information are you giving to them, and how much are you letting them interact with the vehicle. You also have uh, the data side of things and uh, how much information are you generating, what sensors are you looking at on board the vehicle, and how much of that information are you sending up to the cloud. Now, once, it, once you have the data, you can either process information locally on the vehicle or you can do it remotely in the cloud. And this is gonna be a differentiator uh, of how different OEMs approach uh, utilizing that data and seeing if we can do things like predictive maintenance in order to be able to improve uptime of the trucks. Uh, the next is you can look at the advanced algorithms on board the vehicle and what features and benefits you can provide. Uh, so for instance, in the hyper truck, one of the things we do is we actually map out the terrain ahead of the vehicle and then that allows us to optimize the battery packs uh, to be able to you know, hit the base of a hill with a full charge so that you can uh, have as much power as you need while going up the hill. Or the reverse of that is if you know a big downhill is coming up, you want to deplete your battery packs before you get there so that you can capture as much energy as possible through regen braking. You can also leverage the GPS location of these vehicles. So you know, are you near a port or in a port or are you near uh, a warehouse that you're making a delivery to? And you can use that to determine, do you want to use the generator on board the vehicle or not? So for instance, we've seen overseas in London in particular, uh, we're starting to see zero emission zones pop up where you can't have any pollution, any tailpipe emissions in those areas. Uh, so this will allow us to uh, control the vehicle so that we know if the truck's in that zone, you don't have the engine on and you're just running off the battery pack. The last thing to consider is the actual vehicle itself. And there's two different approaches here. You can either build a brand new vehicle from the ground up, or you can leverage an existing chassis that are already made today. Not to say which one is right and wrong, but just two different approaches. And what we saw is different timelines for how long it takes to develop, as well as uh, what's the capital needed in order to bring a new vehicle to the market. So there's your in-depth look at electric semi-trucks and some of the key differentiations around what components are being utilized on each different vehicle. Thanks for watching.